Thank you. And I celebrate all wins. <laughs> That's uh, 28 consecutive exhibition wins for K-State. 11 in a row. Uh, 28 consecutive at Brantley. 11 in a row. TV guys, you got a set in the back? Okay. Coach, if you want to give us some opening comments and then we'll go to questions. I told the guy who was walking me up here, normally I'm eating Chick-fil-A by now. Uh, that's going back, and I, I've never been in this, this area, so this is kind of cool. Um, I, man, the student section was incredible tonight. The energy was great. It was fun to be out there and watch the guys really get after it. I thought they flew around in the first half and, um, you know, played with great passion. I thought they tried to share the ball, and sometimes they shared it a little bit too much you know, gave it to the other team. And so we're going to try and cut, out, cut down on that. But overall, uh, it's a great start, and we got a long way to go. Coach, was your first game all you envisioned it that it would be? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was nervous, you know, beforehand. But, like, once you, like, get out there and it's tipped and it's going, like, you don't really – you're not really paying attention to any of that stuff. It's just – you know, in your head, it you have to like get out of your own head going into it. So, but it was a blast. I mean, I just I had a great time. I got the, the, the proud of the guys. And then I want to ask you about Cam Carter. Um, he got the nod tonight in the starting lineup. Really had a had a productive game. Um, how would you describe his game for fans who may not be super familiar with him? Uh, I don't know if I can describe his game. I just know that I, I just love kids from Louisiana. You know, I mean, uh, when we was at Baylor and went to the Elite Eight, we had Tweedy Carter and Lace Darius Dunn. We called them the Louisiana Animals. Uh, we won the national championships. We had uh, Jared Butler and Mark Vidal, right, called them the Louisiana Animals. And, uh, and now we got Cam and Dorian, and, and I, I'm hoping we can develop some Louisiana Animals in them. Coach, considering the, the short I guess, time frame between when you were hired to now and having to reconstruct an entire roster. When you finally get to see them on the floor, is it better, worse? Where is the, the on-court product compared to what you had maybe hoped for from day one, knowing you had all that work to do? Uh, about where I thought it would, we would get it to, you know? Um, it, it was more... A, it wasn't so much about getting talent as it was about getting the right people and the right kind of guys. And, you know, in the summertime, I told the staff, you know, let's get guys that we don't mind losing with, right? Because you can win with anybody and winning, you know, that kind of, but like, if you have to go through tough times, you want people that you like being around. And this is a group of guys that I like being around. And then um, just after the game, you like, the whole team went around and gave high fives to everyone. You went over and talked to the student section a little bit. Just can you take me through your, your thoughts on the environment tonight and just uh, what you're looking forward to about that? Well, man, for an exhibition game and to have two sections of the, the stands filled with students, I mean, that, that, that was incredible. And I'm so thankful for the students and the fans were there. And, the, you know, you just, you know, you felt the energy in the building. So. Um, this is a good start, and we're going to build it from here. The goal is, you know, have this place being called the Octagon of Doom again. And so that we have to do our part as a team, though. We've got to play at a level that, uh, that they want to come see us play. That was the first game Keontae's played in a couple of years. How did you think he did out there? Ah, man, it was terrific. Actually, we played a, you know, private, uh, closed practice scrimmage, and we probably played him too much. Like he played 31 minutes and had a double double, and so we purposely said, "Hey, we're gonna play him less, not for any reason other than, hey, let's let's get some other dudes in there and not leave him out there as long." I mean, he could have easily played 30 tonight and had a double double. Um, you know, uh, it's it's just cool to see the young fella out on the floor again and doing what he loves. I also wanted to ask about Jarrell. He's your last big off your bench, but then he comes in and he's putting up stats like crazy. Where, where is he at in the rotation right now? Uh, well, I purposely didn't play two guys in the first half because I wanted to be able to take a good look at some other guys because we have some decisions to make. And so Jarrell and Anthony Thomas were two that I told before, you know, before, hey, 
I'm not going to sub you in in the first half. Be a great teammate. You'll play in the second half. Uh, I just have to get a we we have to get a good look because we have to make some decisions. We got to red decide who we're going to red shirt if we're going to red shirt any guys, you know, just just to get a better look moving forward. So it had nothing to do with Terrell being the third big. It just you know he played uh, a lot more in the scrimmage, and so I needed to see some other guys. Coach, you had um, around 20 turnovers is what you finished with. I know you talked a little bit yesterday about wanting yeah. to see that number decrease. But playing at the pace that you guys played at, do you have to kind of balance, OK, there's going to be some turnovers here, but at the same time, we're playing fast, so it's going to happen? No. No. Our, our goal is 11 or less turnovers a game. And we have the guards and the, the, the team, the versatile enough guys, that if we play the right way and don't do some um, things that we're not supposed to do. The game of basketball is very simple, but it's hard to do simple. And our job is to do simple better, right? And that, that's what we have. When we play simple and we do it better, then we look really good. And so um, pace doesn't determine the number of turnovers. And then from a shooting perspective, you guys were 5 of 23 from 3. Where have you guys been at in practice in terms of knocking down the three-point shot? Uh, we probably have... Um, I think we have six guys who are shooting better than 36% at practice, and they also have a positive assist to turnover ratio in practice, and we have four that are shooting better than 40% in practice. Um, I, I thought uh, we were okay in the first half, took a couple ones that, you know, they probably weren't wise shots, um, and then in the second half, we just missed some open looks. Is it as impressive as it seems, the way Desi Sills is so far up to speed since he arrived so late? Yes, yes, it has been so impressive, right? Like, um, I, you know, for me as a coach, uh, I don't want guys to get comfortable and think like, hey, we got to start and line up and that kind of thing. We're going, based on how you practice is how you're going to play. And we have the, you know, the depth to do it and Desi, actually probably deserved to start tonight based on his practice. And I just told him, you know, look, you it was so long before you got here, some other guys have been there. I just, I want to bring you off the bench. And he was fine with it. You know, and he's just a winner, man. He is, you know, two state championships in high school, an elite aide at Arkansas. The young man's a winner. He loves basketball. He's passionate. He cares about his teammates. He's just a, a joy to be around. I think you've said you want to be fast, tough, and gritty. How would you kind of grade yourself on that skill tonight? I, I thought I thought we were okay in each each category. We, I should have thrown in smart in there somewhere. <laughs> I was I was just curious about um, you mentioned the fans, and I, I was wondering what maybe your message is to Kansas State fans as you head into the opener on Monday. Man, we'd love a sellout, and uh, but we understand we have to earn it. And but our fans have been unbelievable. They've they've been engaging. They've helped us in recruiting. They've, you know, I mean, you see what they do for the football team. I mean, and so um, fans uh, impact winning. They do. They impact winning. And so and and I'm thankful that we have fans here in Manhattan. That, that they want to impact winning. So they're going to show up and they're going to help us. And a quick one on Naquan. I mean, he, he's looked very active out there today and, uh, you know, being able to um, uh, follow his, his journey. Um, where is he at right now and how pleased were you with him tonight? Uh, it, Naquan was better tonight. You know, um, he, he didn't start because he got beat out in practice this week, and so we'll see what happens next week. You know, so guys, um, to get to where they want to get to individually and where we want to get to collectively as a team, right, uh, you got to be everyday guys and every play guys and, and develop those habits, and that's what, as a staff, we are trying to do with this team is teach them how, how to do it every single day and because that that's what's going to allow us to accomplish what we want to accomplish as a team and allow them to accomplish what they want to accomplish individually coach how do you think your guards uh did tonight facilitating the ball to get others open shots uh well i think they had was that 14 assists and 
10 turnovers. So they facilitated to both teams tonight. <laughs> and so um, it's going to take us a little time. We had, we had a, multiple turnovers where they thought they were going to, somebody was going to zig and they zagged, you know, where they have to get to know each other in, in that type of a pace. And then we didn't, we purposely didn't run a lot of stuff tonight. And so, you know, very small package that allowed the other team to kind of know exactly what we were doing and stuff. And, but you got to be able to execute when the other team knows what you're doing. And, but overall, man, I'm just telling you, wins are hard to come by, right? So we're going to be excited about the win. And then we're going to get to work again the uh, day after tomorrow. Guys like David and Taiki had flashes kind of throughout the game. How important are those types of guys, those kind of role player guys that are going to come off the bench for you going forward and do into the season? Well, I think we have a team full of role players, right? And everybody's role will change on any given night based on what the other team is doing. And the goal is to have – the open guy takes shots. The goal is to have everyone play defense. The goal is to have the guys who are supposed to rebound, go rebound. The guys who are supposed to get back, get back. That's it. And then at the end of the night, I hope that like every game at a press conference, we have different dudes sitting up here, right? Because that means that different guys stepped up at different times, right? I, I, if it's the same set of guys that's sitting up here all the time, then we're not as balanced or as deep or the type of team that we want to be. And then our, our turnovers, is that kind of the number one thing that you want to see it, kind of improve the, between the now and Monday? No, the number one thing that, 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 that we're working on, right? And we're going to look at them and see what they were and, and how we can fix them. But that's our job as a staff. Uh, you, got, you expressed some concern about turnovers, but you guys did a pretty good job of creating turnovers yourself, I think a dozen steals. Uh, how did you feel? about your ability to disrupt them? I, I, I was pleased. Really, I was pleased. And then I, I was pleased with um, how we turned it into you know, offense. I think we can definitely do better. But, but I saw guys turn over, and we quickly transitioned. And, and not, not, you know, sometimes early on, we were causing turnovers in practice and then like holding the ball. And now we're, the, the quicker we can go from defense to offense, and get easy buckets because especially when you get to the Big 12, it's so hard to score in the half court that you've got to be able to get out and have get some transition buckets. So I noticed before tip off, the team comes running out, coaches are following him. I noticed it, it was a little after that you came out, but it was, it was like over a minute after. My question is, was that you taking a moment to yourself to, you know, and then coming out of the locker room and joining the team for tip off? No, I had to use the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, just honest. I had to use the bathroom. So I came up. I washed my hands, though. I'm just, just so you know. <laughs> Yesterday, you talked about the importance of your bigs being able to run the floor. Can you describe what you saw from Naquan? And I don't want to mispronounce his last name. Is it Iola? Bebe? Ezeola, sorry, there you go. Uh, well, we, we challenged uh, Bebe, David, Jarrell, you know, get us some rim run buckets, and I, I thought we did a good job of that. Um, thought they got out and ran and did a good job. Anything else for Coach? Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.